Here at Shelsley Walsh, the oldest established motorsport venue in the world, we're celebrating the 60th anniversary of the British Hill Climb Championship. First on the hill is perhaps one of the most unlikely cars in the sport. Jim Gazy tackles the steep 1,000 yard ascent in the 700cc turbocharged smart car. There are still several minis competing on the hills and Brian Dennis's version is one of the quickest. For a mini, the early sections of Chelsea through Kennel, Crossing and up into the S's are taken absolutely flat and Brian is doing just that. This is a spirited wheel lifting ascent by Brian and he takes the class lead. But it's the lightweight Caterhams and Westfields that normally have the edge in this class. Peter Herbert's Cosworth BDH version certainly has the power and the Harewood Hill Climb School instructor knows his way up Chelsea. A quick, tidy run from Herbert and he takes the class lead. Andy Russell and his Ginetta have competed in this class for over 20 years. But can the little imp power car match the speed of the Westfield Cosworth? It's a typically hard charging run from the Alsford driver, but he'll have to settle for second place at this stage. With their superior power to weight ratio, the motorcycle engine Westfields and Caterhams are invariably the cars to beat in this class. This car, the Suzuki Hayabusa powered Westfield of Barry Newman, is tipped as favourite to win. Through Kennel, Crossing and up into the S's, the Westfields well on the pace. Class record holders clearly on top form today. That's a very rapid passage through the S's, but something's flown out of the car. It looks like a glove, but whatever it was doesn't slow Barry. He takes the class win by a second and a half. The 2 litre modified production class for road going cars is one of the most evenly matched and competitive on the hills. David Uren is really pressing on with his Westfield Vauxhall. All the cars in this class are fully road legal and on road tyres as you can see as Uren slides sideways out of top S. Dave Wilson's next up in his Caterham, also with 2 litre 16 valve Vauxhall power. You can't miss the colour scheme of this car and Dave's a regular front runner full power up the steep finishing straight and a time good enough to lead the class. Another caterer, Tim Cross, runs the equally popular Rover K-Series. These engines might lose out a fraction to the Vauxhall units on Shells' power slopes, but Cross really leans on the throttle pedal through the S's, heading for the line, and he's just two hundredths of a second down on Wilson to go second. Ken Evans now on another K-Series power caterer of SOR. Ken's really charging through the top S in the SLR, but just brushes the bank on the exit. He doesn't lift off, it's the class lead by half a second from Wilson. Midland Hill Climb Championship sponsor Steve Day is next up in another K-Series caterer, and another man who's regularly up with the front runners. He's really pushing hard to match Evan's time, but a miss gear on the finishing straight that costs valuable time and puts Steve way out of the record. Now it's the determined Will Hall with his distinctive head down style in the Cater and Vauxhall. As you can see the car's for sale as Will switches to single seaters next season. Sideways through the S's it's a quick run with just hundreds of a second separating him from Wilson and Cross. Alex Hoyle now. He's having a guest drive today in Tim Cross's catering. So maybe he's not pushing quite as hard as he would in his own car. 
but he gets the bio cart safely to the top which is the main thing for Alex here's the class record holder now Ash Mason he's had a great season this year in the Midland Championship he's won the title already with records at all three hills in the series Prescott, Loughton Park and here at Chelsea in his Westfield Vauxhall Nothing to prove here then for Ash, but this looks like another class winning run. Evans is eased back to second place by half a second. And Mason, who's also switching to single seaters next year alongside class rival Steve Day, takes yet another win. Lowton Park Hill Climb course manager Martin Silcox is first away in the saloon car class. Martin's Peugeot 205 is built up from his old 309 whose shell was destroyed in a roll at Barbon Hill Climb. But he'll be up against it today as the big turbocharged saloons emerge in with the two litres. Here's another 205. This time it's Ralph Pinder's version. Both great rivals, Pinder and Silcox, are members of Hagley and District Light Car Club's exclusive Hagley Hooligans Club, having both rolled their Peugeots in competition. No such problems today though, and Ralph just gets the better of Martin this time. Martin Pike's immaculate escort, with just 1800cc's of full crossflow power, regularly sets the pace among the two-litre cars and lies second overall in the Midland Championship. It's another spectacular climb by Pike in the Mark 1. Sliding the car through the S's, he maintains his form to lead the two Peugeots. Andrew Burt has been campaigning this turbocharged Subaru legacy for a good many seasons now. Four runners for the Impreza and the Works Rally team, the car is bigger and heavier than its successor, but Andrew really hurls it up Chelsea to move into second place behind Pike's Escort. Coming all the way from West Cornwall, Jeff Twemlow must be one of hill climbing's furthest travel commuters. He's certainly one of the most enthusiastic in his road-going Subaru Impreza, which is out virtually every weekend. Check out the door mirrors. They're turned inwards to reduce aerodynamic drag. Jeff's son, Thomas, is equally enthusiastic in his 2.7-litre BMW 320i. Despite the roll cage, this car is also fully road legal. Look carefully and you can see that the family tradition of reducing aerodynamic drag is carried on in the Beamer. Graham Lokes and the Impreza are clearly out to topple Pike's lead in the Escort, even to the extent of running that door mirror tweet. It's a quick run from the former Hagley Club president, but it just fails to take the class lead from Pike. The Harriman brothers have been taking this class by storm this year, in both Mitsubishi and Subaru cars. They're both in practice today, and this is Peter really pushing hard on this run. It's the class lead from Pike. Now it's Robert Harriman. He won't want to be beaten by his brother, and that's pretty clear as he takes his final competition run of the season. It's a great run from Robert as he charges into the S's. Very quick through the complex, and he takes the lead from his brother.
Roger Banks class record holding Audi Quattro is out of action today so he's reverted to his old 2.6 litre Lotus Sunbeam. Quite a bit down on power to both the Audi and to the Hanover Brothers Impreza. Roger's really having to try everything to get on terms. An understeering moment at Top S just touches the bank. Well, it's not really on today for Roger. And Robert Harriman takes the win. Now we're into the Sports Libra class and first away it's Guernseyman Andy Bugord with his motorcycle powered OMS. This is the first car we've seen today from Steve Owen's York based company and it's a little bit different to the bike engine mallet that Andy used to run. Similar chassis, different engine as Paul Sanford gets away with his 2 litre Millington powered OMS. A good run from Paul, which takes the class lead. Rob Stevens blew up the engine of his Paul Suzuki during yesterday's practice, so he's sharing Sanford's OMS today. He actually holds a Prescott 2 litre record in his very car, so can he repeat the performance here at Chelsley? Not quite, this time he drops in just behind his co driver. Ian Fido sponsors the Powerbeck Hill Climb Leaders Championship and is a regular front runner in this class. He looks like maintaining his form too with this run in the Pilby Millington MP43. runs good enough for the class lead. Earlier today, West Countryman Ed Hollier secured the Powermet Hill Prime Leaders title. But on the second runs, going for the class record, things didn't go quite according to plan. Last to run, Ken Sims is in the biggest car in the class, the Metro 6R4. Great to see these cars in action on the hills, evoking memories of the works BL cars. But once again, it's a missed gear out of Top S that costs valuable time. Ian Crookshanks leads away the first of the single-seater classes for 600cc cars. Ian's Honda CBR engine OMS is one of the early cars built by Steve Owens' company and he rarely misses a British Championship meeting on the mainland. Nuclear engineer Tony Pashley built his third Marengo single-seater a couple of seasons ago. The other two are now in different hands and still actively competing, but Tony's steadily building more speed into his latest Yamaha R1 powered version. Caroline Ryder works for Honda, so it's appropriate that her Jedi is powered by one of their motorcycle engines. The daughter of former British Spring champion Ken Ayres, she's been virtually brought up in sprints and hill climbs. Adam Steele is certainly one of the men to beat in this class with his Suzuki powered Markley. He holds the 600cc racing class record on several British hills and has Dave Aldridge's Shelsey record set just a month ago, firmly in his sights. He's really pushing the tiny fuel injector car into the S's on this run and the record could be on In fact it is, and another sub-30 second run resets the class record yet again. 
So Tony Shearman now has a stiff target to match in his 40 Yamaha. He's giving it everything in the carbon tub machine, but Steele's record time looks just out of reach. Second place will have to do for the moment. Here's the Jedi Honda again. And just to show how much of a family affair hill climbing can be, this time it's Caroline Ryder's husband, John, at the wheel. Dave Aldridge, though, has just seen his record demolished at the hands of Adam Steele. So having been the first 600cc single-seater driver to break the 30-second barrier at Chelsley, he'll be aiming to get the record back. It's a stirring run in the space frame at Ernest Hornet, but he's not quite got the pace to challenge Steele. Although he does push him and back to third place and confirms his runner-up spot in the Leaders' Championship. Once the province of Imp and Cosworth engine variants, the 1100cc single-seater class is now exclusively motorcycle powered. Alison Emer is first away in her Jedi. The younger of the two Kent-based Rutland brothers, Simon Rutland always goes well at Shelsley in another of the increasingly popular space frame Hermes Hornet chassis. latest customer car from Steve Owens works in York. Roger Lindsay is next to the right. Former Formula One fuel technologist for Shell shares this Mark IV Jedi Suzuki his son Hamish. We've already seen Alison in, in this Jedi. This is husband Paul. Both switched to single seaters after campaigning Austin A35 and Healy Sprite cars in the classic classes. Carl Scholar's home brewed Spectre is unusual to say the least. Running cart wheels on beam axles, there are four driving wheels at the back. This is a car in the spirit of the true Shelsley Special, built specifically to climb the Midland Mountain Wheeling Club's famous hill. Ex-copper Brian Sanders is having a weekend off from his duties as a registered MSA timekeeper to drive his cat pole Jedi Suzuki. Tony Millard now, the current president of the Hagley Car Club, Fields another of the latest OMS Hornet chassis. And Martin Herridge campaigns his faithful Dave Pierce designed George Buny built Buny Suzuki. Well, Simon Rutland still leads the class, but now it's the second of the two Rutland brothers, John who keeps it in the family with a quick run in the OMS Hornet to take over at the head of the field. Pace is hotting up now in this class and Hamish Lindsay has the bit between his teeth in the Jedi. It's a spectacular run from Hamish, and he grabs the class lead from John Rutland. So can George Brown attack the leaders in his Bill Chaplin built force? Son of former outright Chelsea record holder Richard Brown and one of five members of the motoring Brown family, all of whom compete, he could easily be the one to challenge the leaders. It's the third run of the class in the 27 second bracket, but George can only hold third place behind John Rutland. So with Hamish Lindsay leading, only Brody Branch can deny the Jedi driver the win. A relative newcomer to hill climbing, Branch has set the hills alight this year in his Ian Dyson built Force Suzuki. He set a new 1100cc record at Chelsea just a month ago. Can he repeat the feat and snatch the win from Lindsay? Let's watch the run from the former motorcycle racer.
26.71 seconds. Not quite a record, but it's another win for Brody Branch. Now to one of the most competitive classes on the hills, the 1600cc racing class. Mark Goodyear is first away in Pat Roach's carbon tub OMS Suzuki. Any one of a number of drivers could win this class, and like the two previous ones, all the cars have motorcycle engines. Long-time campaigner Richard Homer's four chassis, which he shares with Dave Kimberley, is no exception. Russ Pickering's vision, also with Suzuki high booster power, is developed from Paul Gibson's original Formula 3 tub. Russ shares the car with son Chris, who, as we'll see later, is one of the rising stars of the class. Lynn Owen, wife of OMS constructor Steve, leaves the line in the works home at Hayabusa. Lynn has a busy day today as she's also driving the famous Patsy Burt McLaren in the British Hill Climb 60th Anniversary Cavalcade. Pat Roach is one of Southern Ireland's quickest hill climbers. Now he's having a very successful first full season in British Hill Climbing with a new carbon tub OMS Hayabusa. run of form looks like continuing for Pat as he takes the class lead. Tim Wilson them now with another carbon fibre based OMS. This looks like another very competitive run from the chairman of the VARC Yorkshire Centre who run Airwood with Hill Climb. It's a new lead time ahead of Roach. Peter Radnor with the four Suzuki returned to motorsport a couple of seasons ago after a long absence from the sport. He was the founder of Landar Racing Cars way back in the 70s. Scott Ian Davidson is aboard another of these popular OMS Hornet space frame chassis. Cumbrian architect Peter Speakman is one of the most experienced competitors in the class. He's competed in a wide range of cars from all eras over the years. This is his latest before Suzuki. The 2007 Harewood FTG champion, airline pilot James Blackmore flies on the hill as well in his own. DJ race cars are built up in the Peak District by Del Quigley, Andy Smith and the team. This is Nigel Morris in their Firehawk single-seater. Dave Kimberley is a regular challenger for the class lead in the Force Hayabusa that he shares with Richard Home. Unfortunately, the pair are experiencing a few problems with the car this weekend and they're just a little bit off their usual pace. Former rally driver and then sprinter, Ryan Price, is also a spectacular hill climber. He's already scored British Championship points in his OMS at Wiscombe Park this year and this run looks set to challenge the leaders. Sure enough, he relieves Tim Wilson of the class lead. One of the sensations of this season, young Chris Pickering really flies in this hybrid vision with motorcycle power. Already a record holder at Harewood, he's certainly one of the men to beat in this class today. He needs to beat Price's 26.26 to take the lead. And he does with the first 25 second run of the day, 25.53. 
Auto, what can Mr. OMS Steve Owen do about Pickering's class lead? The lights are green. And it's a determined start for the auctioneer who's no stranger to the top spot in a class in which at least 50% of the cars are those of his own manufacture. This is a really hard charge by Steve. Tremendous through the S's. Can he get into the 25s? Not quite. It's second place for Steve with just one runner to go. But this is the class record holder. The quiet but fiercely determined and highly focused Welshman, Robert Kenry, guaranteed to set the hills alight on every appearance in his electric green force Hayabusa. He's got his sights set on yet another record. seconds, yet another class win and a new record for Robert Kenry. Amazingly, that's just a quarter of a second outside the outright hill record set by British champion Graham White Jr. just six short years ago. The two litre racing class is another very competitive division. Jill Marshall is first away in this 1994 Delara Formula 3 chassis with Vauxhall Power Unit. Delara chassis are becoming increasingly popular in this class, all powered by Vauxhall engines. This is DTA engine management systems boss Alan Warburton sharing Paul Haynes' 2001 version. Lionel Richie rarely misses a Midlands Hill Climb event in his now somewhat elderly Formula Atlantic Argo JM9 Vauxhall, which used to be run by Ken Snailham and Simon Frost. One of the most experienced competitors here today, Haverford West farmer Bill Morris has been competing since the 60s. Another long-standing competitor is Dave Whitehead. The Birmingham-based race car preparation engineer is set to retire from active competition to still be involved with the sport, together with wife Lynn, who also drives a car. In fact, we'll see her in the Hill Climb Trends class, which comes up later in the programme. Richard Marshall, electronics wizard with the Renault Formula 1 team, has devised traction control systems for all his competition cars, including this Delara 394. The system's certainly effective, he leads the class. Tony Hunt has had his fair share of problems with the supercharged Ford Suzuki this season. But it's going well today. He just fails to catch Richard Marshall. John Chalmers has been enjoying some great results in his immaculate Techcraft built world. The 302 was the last Formula 3 car built by Ron Torinac's enormously successful company. John runs a Cosworth BDG unit in the car and his first run is good enough for third in class. On his second run, he's got second place in his sights. Then he encountered a bit of a problem. The accident brings out the clerk of the course, Dave Nursey, and the rescue teams. But happily, John is quite okay and hangs on to his third place in class. Here's another of the growing number of Formula 3 Delara Vauxhall runs in this class. Here's Piers Thin's version.
Tim Elmer is one of the most recent converts to the Delara ranks, having moved up through a series of clubmen and sports racing cars. This is his first season in the single seater. Paul Webster had a bit of an upset here earlier in the year with his Delara, but he's back in action again, and the former Gersten Downhill Climb champion is as quick as ever. Already with the British Championship win under his belt at Doom in Scotland, Paul Haynes regularly tops the two-litre entry in his Delara 301. The time to build is the unfortunate John Chalmers 26.42. And Haynes looks on course to attack that time. It's another quick, tidy run through the upper reaches, and 25.59 takes the lead. Final run of Tom New has also taken the British win. And he's set for 10th place in the British Championship for the second year running in his Pilby MP88. Watch the sparks flying from the skid block through the kink as new challenges Haynes lead. Takes the win, but only just by four hundredths of a second. With all the class runs counting as qualifying runs for the all-important Nicholson McLaren Aviation British runoffs, which is when championship points are scored, the majority of the qualifiers at Shelsey will come from the big single-seater class. Once Mark Coley's pit crew have removed the protective wrapping from the ultra-soft Avon front tyres, he'll be first away in the Opal V6 powered Gould GR55. Carl Davison is next, sharing Simon Dernan's familiar Red Gould GR55B. We'll be seeing a lot more of Carl in this car. He's brought it to run in 2008. Paul Ransom brings defending champion Martin Groves Gould to the line. He's had some good results in his own right with the Nicholson McLaren V8 power GR55B and goes particularly well at Chelsea. It's a fine 23.98 from Ransom. That'll take some beating. Roger Moran has been forced to play second fiddle to Sun Scott for most of the season, but the 1997 British champion is still a serious player. Coming to the line now is the biggest OMS yet built, the 4-litre Cosworth DFL V8 power machine in the hands of Bob Penrose. On the line now is a hill climb legend, six times British hill climb champion Tony Mark for his Opal V6 powered gold. Tony has 13 Shirley FTDs Five hill records behind him. Into the top S comes a six times champion, but that's an uncharacteristic mistake. It's still a 29 second run. Cars like Jim Robinson's four cylinder Pilbeam Heart 
dominated the hill climb scene throughout the 80s. Jim still gets some good results with this now almost vintage example of hill climb technology. It's the Ghoul V6 again now, this time in the hands of Mark Coley's brother Andy. Oliver Tomlin comes from a third generation of hill climbers. His sister Amy competes, his mother Sandra is a former shells and record holder, and his grandfather, Phil Chapman, built a number of hill climb sports cars. Today, Oliver's driving the very same Philbin Judd 4 litre that Roger Moran took to the 1997 title. But that's a little bit too much right foot at bottom end. Fern Downs Basil Pitt is at the wheel of one of the latest Gould V8 chassis, the GR55C. Basil is having his best ever season and is set to win the Egethley Trophy for the top competitor that hasn't previously finished in the championship top 10. With the car beset with problems this year, we've only seen former double champion Brian White Jr.'s awesome V10 Predator out a couple of times this season. But when it's on song, it's one of the most spectacular sights in hill climbing. Trevor Willis scored the first ever win for the OMS Mark and for himself at Mooley Bay earlier this year. Then went on to repeat the feat just one week later at Wiscombe Park. This is a man on form. It's another great run from Willis that sets the pace in the class so far. The most experienced competitor in top line hill climbing, Rob Turnbull first made his mark on the British Championship scene back in 1976. Off the line now in one of the most powerful cars at the meeting today, the 650 horsepower Gould Cogbrook HP. Retired police officer Chris Merrick is devoting all his time to hill climbing now and having one of his best ever seasons in this ex Roy Lane 4 litre Gould Jug. It's another quick run from Merrick, which edges out Willis to take the lead by just two hundredths of a second. After a long career in the sport at top level, Simon Durning is making his final appearance in the Gould V8. He's determined to go out on a high too. This is another characteristically neat run from the Kent man that shares the lead with Paul Ranson, an identical 23.98. After a tremendous battle year long with Scott Moran, Martin Groves looks set to secure his third successive British title here at Chelsea. But the first step is to qualify for the championship runoff. Martin's not showing his hand just yet. That's a mid-23 and goes top qualifier, but Moran has still to run. Here's Groves' main challenger now. After his best ever season, Scott Moran has really put Martin Groves under pressure. Here's his qualifying run for the runoff. is the class win ahead of Groves, but the all-important points battle is still to come. <laughs> <laughs> 